can we selectively breed superhumans? You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Dogs really are one of humanity's best friends. They've been bred to be this way. Centuries of pruning the genetic characteristics of wolves created dog breeds, and further selective breeding amplified traits in those breeds, so much so that researchers in a project led by Durham University have found that modern dog breeds are genetically disconnected from their ancient ancestors. This sort of breeding isn't limited to dogs. Humans have bred other animals for specific traits, and numerous species of plants have also been modified to increase their yield, their resistance to disease, or just to make them more visually appealing. While this artificial pressure on natural selection has led to innovations in food, medicine, and more, it also raises one terrifying question. What if the human race decided to selectively breed itself? Here's where it gets crazy. We have, or at least groups of humans have made the attempt. This practice, known as eugenics, has a bad name nowadays, but that wasn't always the case. Sir Francis Galton, cousin of Charles Darwin, coined the term in the 1880s, taking inspiration from the Greek phrase, born well. Originally, Galton proposed using financial incentives to encourage marriages that he believed would breed smarter, healthier children. While the term may have come in the 19th century, the idea has been around since Plato, and ancient civilizations also practiced various forms of eugenics. Today, it's associated with atrocities, genocide, forced sterilization, and infanticide. But in the late 19th and early 20th century, eugenics enjoyed tremendous popular support. It was hailed as a solution for a higher quality population. Multiple U.S. states passed legislation in favor of forced sterilization, removing criminals, people with mental disorders, specific ethnic groups, and more from the reproductive pool. This nationwide movement had opponents, but they were powerless to stem the tide of support for eugenics. A poll from 1937 indicated that around two-thirds of the U.S. supported sterilization of mental defectives. Before World War II, proponents of the established U.S. eugenics movement began speaking with scientists in Europe, including Germany, about the purported benefits of this practice. The Rockefeller Institution assisted in the creation of German eugenics programs. Today, the idea of selectively breeding a human being seems appalling. It stinks of racism, murder, and cruelty. But could wide-scale eugenics programs continue in the modern age? If so, it's something they don't want you to know. Stay tuned to learn more about genetic mutation and real-life superpowers in our next episode.